Tonight's opening starts with Tom Bergen Coffee Roasters Coffee Stout. This is a collaboration between Tom Bergen Coffee Roasters and Fort Gary Brewing in Winnipeg. This beer is dry hopped with locally roasted Columbia coffee beans from Tom Bergen Coffee Roasters, which brings out chocolate and coffee notes naturally present in the malt. A nutty character and just a hint of burnt sugar. So, uh, now that the ceremonial beer opening is done, let's get on with the meal opening. Starting with the smallest package. What does it say? It says plug. What kind of plugs did I order? Banana plugs. Okay. Um, I have been using a few of these. Uh, some to power things because where's my power supply here? Yeah, some to power things using the banana outputs on this power supply that I built. Oh, it's quite a while now. Uh, I'll put a link up there to that video. Well, I guess also to use the silicone wire that I got a mailbag or two ago to build up some of my own test cables. Either banana to banana or banana to clip lead or whatever I need. Ten pieces set four millimeter black and red banana screw speaker audio cable wire plugs connector. Got these from 1-WEPIO. Okay, uh, it cost me $3.92 Canadian with free shipping. Looks like they don't have a lot to say about it. Oh, here we go. Not much to say. There's five black and five red. They claim high quality and they claim that they not contain any harmful objects. Rubber ring can prevent smoke and tar from leaking. Remove tar while using about 10 times. Oh, that's an awesome description. All right, next, I guess we'll get this one that just fell off the pile. Anyway, it says two times relay. It is two relays. These are five volt coil uh, relay that can handle up to theoretically 10 amps at 250 volts AC or 30 volts DC. Five pins on the bottom. So we have coil and uh, normally open and normally closed. The coil is across those two pins. Shows about 70 ohms. There is the common, there is the normally closed, and this one over here will be the normally open. So when the coil is energized, these two pins will be connected together. When the coil is not energized, these two are connected together. So my specific reason for buying these, you may remember, is these D1 Mini Relay Shields. Now the D1 Mini is an ESP8266. It uh, which is a 3.3 volt device. The board is a 5 volt board. There's uh, 5 volts comes in from the USB and there's a little regulator down there. But these relays that are designed to stack with it came in with a 12 volt coil. And there is no 12 volts anywhere on the D1 Mini. And there is no 12 volt input on this. So where the hell is it getting 12 volts from for the relay? The answer is, of course, these are cheap crap uh, knockoff units. So I ordered these to replace them and I will be doing that in the near future. Two pieces, high quality, five pins relay, five volt DC coil power relay PCB with, and there's the part number. Got these from Speed Mart. Currently they're selling for $2.73 each with $5.60 Canadian shipping. Details about it, uh, voltage five volts, current 10 amps, five pins. Oh, there's two in the package. Oh, okay. Right, of course there is. Next in has no description on it because it came from the Canadian dropshipping warehouse. And let's just pretend that I didn't open this uh, a second ago with the camera paused, shall we? Oh, look, it's a bunch of different things. Uh, let's start with this one. Uh, GYM. L8511. I'm going to have to look that up uh, to see what this little module is. But it appears that that little chip there has a transparent lid on it. Wait a minute. Is that the same as this little light intensity sensor from that kit that I was looking at last week? No, that's, uh, that's a different chip. Okay. That is an interesting looking little guy though. 
Oh, I'm gonna have to check the listing to find out what this really is. Can't remember. Found it. ML8511 UVB UV rays sensor. Breakout UV light sensor. Analog output for Arduino. Got this from Auction Park for $4.73 Canadian. That should be interesting. And it also gives me the module number to look up. That's useful. Yeah, that looks like it. Doesn't say anything about it though. Okay. I'm going to have to assume that there's an Arduino library available for this thing though. Which I will have to find when I uh, go and tinker with it. And I'm guessing that that's going to be the library name. Yeah, I figured there was going to be a library for it. Okay, cool. Uh, well, that, that'll make it easy to tinker with when I, uh, when I get around to doing that. Stay tuned. Also in the package from that same seller, another module here. It is a solid state relay with a low level trigger. So I guess that is the normally open contacts there. That is the solid state relay. Omron is a very well known brand in relays. The relay itself is made in Japan. Uh, five volt DC input and the load. Can I read that? 240 VAC, two amp, 50 or 60 Hertz. And over on this side, we have DC plus DC minus and channel one. So I'm assuming you give it power to operate and then that is the signal turner on and off. One slash two slash four channel, five volt Omron SSR, uh, part number solid state relay module for Arduino. I bought two of the one channel ones. Uh, they are currently selling for $1.93 each. I paid $3.86 for the pair of them, so that hasn't changed very much. And of course, free economy shipping because that's just what I look for. Other than some photos, there's no other information down here, just the model number, which is a useful search term, I suppose. And the last item in that package from that seller is this little tube of eight pin dip ICs which are 741 op amps. Okay, I remember ordering those. Don't remember exactly why I ordered 741 specifically, other than that they are the classic op amp from you know, decades and decades ago when I was young and first learning about these things and couldn't afford to buy this kind of stuff. So that could be useful to play with, just, uh, just for a nostalgia trip, if nothing else. They're not the lowest noise or highest efficiency op amps these days, but they are a neat nostalgia kick. 10 pieces UA741CN DIP8 UA741LM741 ST. Operational amplifiers I see new, they claim. Same as the last two things from Auction Park. Uh, 99 whole pennies for these things. 10 cents each. Can't go wrong with that. And as usual, the seller gives you very little information on it. But this is a known quantity i know exactly what it is assuming it's not you know a cheap fake or whatever but why would you fake a 10 cent ic that's you know decades and decades old could be b stock could be who knows they're going to be interesting to play with anyways just because next in we have what does it say integrated circuits Ooh, sounds like a lot of them too It is a lot of them. Are they all the same? Yes, they are all the same. These are Max 485 chips. These are RS-485 line drivers. And RS-485 is the underlying protocol on DMX-512. So these things can do a differential drive down a long uh, pair of uh, wires with no voltage reference between them other than that pair of wires. At one point, uh, you may remember I got that cheap stage light to tinker with uh, and quickly made up a little Arduino uh, board to, uh, to talk to it. I intend at some point in the future, now don't hold me to a schedule because my, my schedule is pretty random, but at some point I intend to experiment further with, uh, with DMX and that's what this is for. Well, I could also control other things at great distance as well, down just random uh, lengths of cable. Hmm. 50 pieces, Max 485 CPA DIP8, Max 485 RS485, RS422 transceiver, new. 
possibly. Got these from Wangsheng Electronic. Paid $4.98 for the 50 of them with free shipping. So, again, that's, what, a dime a piece? Probably could have ordered 10 because that's likely more than I'm going to want. But this just seemed too good a deal to pass up, probably. I don't know, anybody local want a few of these things? <laughs> Yet another seller with no information in the description. Which I guess for something like this doesn't really matter because it's a very standard part. And the last one in. This one I have a pretty good idea what it is because it came from Evil Mad Science Limited. You may remember back in December that I built one of their kits on... Uh, as part of my December kit build uh, extravaganza. And I will leave a link to uh, that kit build up in the corner there. But this is another one of those kits. It is a giant size 741 op amp. So there is the circuit board. There is the, oh, it's a, this one is a surface mount, not a dip style. Okay. And it uses surface mount components. Oh man, what have I got myself in for? Well, it's going to be fun. And if I remember correctly from the last one of their kits that I built, they come with an excellent set of instructions, including actual soldering instructions. So as surface mount kits go, this is very beginner friendly. Yeah, and on their website, there will be a schematic of this and a lengthy theory of operation for anybody who wants to go really really deep on this classic op amp the 741 se discrete 741 op amp surface mount soldering kit transistor scale replica of a classic analog workhorse now this coming from an american company who develops their own products is quite expensive compared to the cheap chinese stuff but this is such a unique thing i really wanted to get it even the product description is just huge. As it says here, and as I mentioned, uh, newer op amp designs may outperform in just about every possible aspect, speed, noise, voltage range, etc., etc. After 50 years, this one is still in production and still in use. I mean, for a lot of us, uh, and I know there's a lot of you watching uh, that are as old as me or possibly even older, if that's possible, I know a lot of you guys will remember this thing fondly from way back when you were first learning about electronics. Here's their document link from that page, uh, 11 pages of goodness explaining exactly how the op amp works, including a full schematic of it. And I'm not going to go into the depth on this uh either now or probably not even when I'm building the thing because I mean, it's 11 pages of dense information. I will obviously put a link to the product description which has links to this and many other things. The other thing they have and that I almost got is the through-hole version which comes in a an emulated dip package. But I figured I've already got a, a giant dip. I'll have a giant uh, surface mount. And that gives me a chance to practice on surface mount soldering. But I'm not going to be doing this right away. I might even save it uh, for my end of the year kit build extravaganza. I'm not sure yet. But it will definitely make a return appearance on this channel in the future. And just before I wrap up, there's one more thing in the package that I forgot to mention. Since I was paying the shipping anyway, I ordered some stickers that they, uh, that they sell just for fun. Uh, <laughs> if nothing else, that definitely describes my coding. Um, and if I actually package up some product with software in it or a project with software in it, I'll be sure to include one of those on it. So here is the contents of today's Mailbag Monday haul, and quite the assortment it was. Shipping times. The banana plugs took 25 days. These two 5-volt relays took 42 days. This package of stuff that had the uh, two solid-state relays in it, the UV sensor, and the 741s took 17 days. 
the Max 485 took 24 days, and this thing coming from the USA, going through Canada and American postal system, took 17 days to get here. And that's going to be fun. Actually, it's all going to be fun to play with. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me uh, keep these mailbags rolling in and, of course, buying me a beer now and again. Uh, thanks to everybody who watches and comments and supports the channel however they can. You guys are awesome. Um, yeah, comments and questions down below as usual. Um, I will talk to you later.